Hey guys, how you doing? It's Keptek here, bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over a ticketing system. Um, obviously, if you're new to my channel, I do IT videos and stuff, support videos about how to get into IT. So always rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way, you know, when I go live, greatly appreciate it. Okay, so today I want to go over Jira. Uh, I got over this before, like the Jira ticketing system. But I want to go over it more in depth. And for someone that's brand new, I want to show you how you can get it for free today. So you could practice with it. And then when you're done practicing with it and you understand how it works, uh, you could add that skill to your resume. That's why I am showing you how to do this in today's video. So hopefully when we're done with this video, you're actually, you have some sort of understanding on what a ticketing system is and how it works. All right. So let me share my screen with you and show you a PowerPoint slide actually that I created. So hopefully this helps you out. Uh, share, share one. All right. So let's open up my PowerPoint. All right. So ticket system helped us understanding ticket system Jira. So a lot of guys or a lot of people are trying to get into IT or they do help desk or IT support. You need to understand some sort of ticketing system. So there's Jira, there's ServiceNow, there's Remedy, there's Freshers, there's Spiceforce. There's all so many different ticketing systems. This one is free. So why not take advantage of it, right? So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that real soon. Let's just talk about this first. So, in an IT system, make sure to ask if the company has a wiki to help you with IT issues. So, some of these companies use uh, Jira with a wiki page. So, Jira has its own wiki page, and basically, what a wiki is is a it's a website or a, think of it like a knowledge base for IT. So. I don't know if you guys know, but some companies have a knowledge base for IT. So that way you could actually figure out some applications the company is using. Some companies have an in-house application that you just cannot fix it unless you go to a knowledge base and actually figure out how that works. Um, always remember that Google is your best friend. Nothing wrong with Google. Google is your buddy and friend. Remember that no one knows everything and we don't know everything in IT. Um, ask for approval. If you need to do something on someone's computer or something, like, always ask for approval. Uh, each company has their own way of doing things. Just remember that uh, since you're new and you're brand new to IT, take take a step back. Take it slow. It's not a race. Take your time. Learn as much as you can. Usually when it's someone is brand new, it may take them two months. It may take them three months. It may take them one month. It may take them a lot longer or a lot shorter. Or, you know, depends on the individual and how they learn, how they obtain information. So that's why I have to go over this. All right. Understand where the tickets go. A lot of people, they were brand new to IT. Uh, if they don't get the right training on the proper training in their company, usually they give the ticket to the wrong person. Don't do that. Give it to the right person, the proper person that it goes to. Um, whenever you close a ticket, put notes on it. Obviously, this is something self-explanatory. Why notes? Because you might see that issue again. You don't know if you have that issue again. What if what if, you, what if you're helping Bob or whatever, and he has this weird issue on his computer, and then for some odd reason, he has that same issue and you don't know how to fix it, but you, but you close a ticket for it, but you never put notes on it. And then you're like, ah, oh, crap, I don't know how I fixed this issue, you know? So make sure you put notes on every ticket that you close and put the notes on how you actually close it. Because a lot of people that are brand new to IT or already have job experience, they usually refer back to old tickets. Um, be sure to attach approval on an email. So basically what that means is you could, you could get a thread, you could forward an attachment on an email thread and basically you could you could put that on a ticket. You could drag it over to the ticketing system. Do it that way or you could just put notes on the ticket. Whatever works for you, get approval for it. Uh, use a ticket system to your advantage, like I said earlier, by looking at old tickets. So make sure you use your ticketing system to help you out because maybe you have an issue you've never seen before. Maybe someone else has seen it before. So you wanna go to your ticket system, research it. This is, so it's having an Outlook issue, for example, you type Outlook issue and then see who resolved that issue in the past, maybe someone that worked in this company before may have fixed it in the past. You don't know unless you look up that ticket. Um, follow up on tickets that were assigned to you if you gave it to someone else. So sometimes some companies, and I'm going over this, I'm going over this because sometimes some companies have a system where you can't do the ticket. So they assign, they, 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 they force you or they make you give it to someone else. And then you're stuck in the middle. You're like the middleman. So basically, there's like a like a like a firewall change for somebody, or there's some sort of website that needs to be allowed for someone. This is a hypothetical example. Someone needs someone needs help with a website, right? You're not allowed to you're not allowed to allow it. You don't have access to do that. So you give it to a network admin, and a network admin is 
the one that has to allow it. So they had to get approval for that. They get approval for that and they allow it. But then the customer or the client is asking for feedback or is asking for, um, you know, just following up on you. And you're like, oh, I'm like the middleman. So I'm waiting for the network admin to actually finish it. So just follow up on your tickets. Make sure you update all your tickets. If you take five tickets, update all of them accordingly. Um, take 10 tickets, update them accordingly. Make sure you update all your tickets. It's very important. It's an SLA agreement, which is service level agreement. Some companies have it set to 72 hours. So after 72 hours, a client does not get back to you. You could actually close out the ticket. Really depends on your company. Really depends on policies and procedures. But this is very important that you update every single ticket that you have assigned to you because managers look at that. Everyone looks at that when you're working IT support or help desk. Um, always communicate with the client. Like I said, after closing a ticket, don't just close the ticket on the fly because you feel like it. Up, update them. Communication is key to su being successful in IT. If you communicate well with your team, you won't have issues. If you communicate well with your manager, you won't have issues. If you communicate well with the client, you will not have issues at all. So all of those things are very important, okay? Ticket system. So understand how the ticket system works from each company has their own way of doing it. Like I always said, I preached this before, every company has their own way of doing it. So there is help desk level one and then help desk level one might not be able to do it. So they have to assign it to help desk level two. Um, and then some companies require you to get approval from your managers. That's why that's there. What if the manager needs to approve right over here? You don't know. And then you have cybersecurity right over here. What, what if what if you, you have a ticket that you need to assign to cybersecurity because you can't do it? It's, a, it's an issue that cybersecurity can do. What if you're over here and you have a network admin that can only do it? You don't know. What if a sysadmin can only do it? You don't know. What if a Linux admin can only do it? So understanding the different departments of your company of where you work. They will train you on this, but I want to go over this. Why? So then you're less stressed out when you go to the actual job. Okay, so they have an infrastructure in place as to what Kevin said. So now this makes more sense to me. So I'd rather you understand it this way, what I'm doing right now, then you're not understanding anything at all. And then you're stressed out, if that makes sense. So, and then they, they, some companies have an IT director and the IT director has to approve or the CTO has to approve and vice versa. It goes back to you. They give you back the ticket and you go ahead and you could, you could actually do it. So there is some sort of approval process for every company. Every company has their own way of doing it. So that's the reason why I got to go over this. All right, now I'm going to actually get out of this and I'm going to show you how Jira works and just how to use it and how to get it for free, okay? And then you can add this skill to your resume. That's the good part about it. So um, let's just go over here. I'm gonna put the website below in my description. So you can go ahead and download it for free. Um, so it says, this is like a website basically. So you go here, it says you could support 10 users, three agents, includes two gigabytes of storage, offers community support, is always free, no credit card needed. This is absolutely free by the way. So you would you would get the, the Jira service management one. That's the one that you would get. See, no credit card required for this. And you just select this one, you hit next. And then you would put, you will put your, your site name and this is my email address. You put your site, I did it already, by the way. So I don't got to do anything. And you hit next, 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 agree. And then you open it up, okay? I'm um, gonna close out of this. So this is the ticketing system. So what is a ticketing system? I just gone over this. So, you know, a ticketing system is a request that a client or a user puts in and then you grab that ticket and then you assign it to yourself and you close it and you put notes on it. So that's basically what that's basically what IT help desk is all about. Just as like for an example, right? Someone's having an Outlook issue, right? You put out, you put Outlook issue, right? And then if you want to drag anything, you can. And then you have like, see, this is Active Directory. You have, you have an intranet. You have all these different things that you, that you could utilize, right? Um, I'm going to put Active Directory and I'm going to put account is locked out, right? And then you have your, your block it's blocked by and you, your link issues and you have issue by and then you assign it. You could assign it to yourself, whoever you want. And then the priority is it high, is it medium, is it low? So some companies, they, they, they you know, they have this, it's a priority issue. So sometimes if something is set to high, um, it could be done by, by, by you or it could be done by the client or it could be done by whoever created that ticket. So they could set it. If it's really important, they will put super duper high. Um, sometimes a company or, or a client or a user or a person We'll put that this is high and it's not high. So you wanna you wanna look at the priority issue. If it's actually really like it's really important or is it not important? So you, you have to know how to prioritize your issues when you're looking at different tickets. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna set it as high because 
its Active Directory and their account is locked out. That's rare because they can't do anything. At this point, you can't do anything on the computer. So it's going to be really, really important. Um, and then see there's approval right here. Like I said, every company has an approval process and you hit create. And then the ticket is right here. You just grab the ticket. And then obviously you have your notes over here and it's giving me a tour of how to do it. So I tell you guys, you practice this, you'll be a, a lot, you'll be less stressed out when you go to an actual job. That's the reason why I'm going over this today. So yeah, you have the option to reply to the customer or add a note. So then you put a note in here. You're like, yeah, I unlocked the account just now, right? I'm not going to show you how to actually unlock an AD account because we've done this several times, right? And you hit save. And you see it has a little lock right here because anyone that has access to the ticketing system that's part of your team, they could see it, but the customer cannot see it. That's the point of this. So you have different systems, different settings, and different things. Every company set up different. So you could do this. You could reply to the customer directly by sending them an email, or you could reply to the customer by replying to a ticket inside the application. So that's entirely up to you and how you do it, okay? And then when you're done with the ticket, um, you could just close out of it. So this is view process, stop pro processing. They have all these different things, right? And then you have you have clone, you have move, you have close, and you, and then you're you're pretty much pretty much what you could do is you could just you could just grab the ticket, right? You have the you have the ticket right over here, right? Um, got it. And then you could just close the ticket if you want. So that it says to open, right? So you put pending, right? Pending, and then you, you want to respond to the customer. I unlocked your account just now. Right, you pending. Then see it tells you how to how to look, and it goes back to start in progress. Now it's in progress. You just start progress, and then you want to mark as done. So account has been unlocked, and it, and it keeps it keeps updating the ticket system. So you put mark as done, um, and then you're gonna put done, and that's it, and you're done. And now it created a bunch of this. You don't got to do all, you know, you, you, you couldn't put updates on tickets if you want. It's entirely up to you how you do it. They will train you on this in your job. So don't worry about it. But I want to go over this so then you actually understand how ticketing system works. So you want to grab the ticket, assign it yourself, put proper notes on it, and then just close out the ticket. And you're good to go after that. And don't take all the tickets in the queue. You know, you have a team. So people will grab tickets. You will grab tickets. Work together with your team collaborate with each other. And if you're stuck on something, ask for help. Always important to ask for help. And that's it. That's pretty much it. And I'm going to close out of the sharing screen. And that's it. That's pretty much it for today. I just wanted to go over a quick video on how to use Jira, understanding the ticketing system and how it works. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. I hope this video helps you out if you're brand new to IT. That's the purpose of today. I hope you have some sort of understanding of what we do in the ticketing system if you're doing help desk or IT support. With that being said, I'll leave the link below for this um, for Jira for free. And um, you can download it for free and play around with it. All right. I hope you guys have a great Saturday. Take care. Peace.